kind of approach the meditation as a skill, which means there are things you're going to do for the sake of other things. The path and the goal are different things. They're connected, but they are different. The road to the Grand Canyon is one thing, the Grand Canyon is something else. The road doesn't cause the Grand Canyon, but it takes you there. So focus your attention on the road, the breath right now, your mind right now. Are they together? If they're not, what can you do to bring them together? What kind of breathing would be nice to stay with? What kind of attitude of the mind would be happy to stay? Sometimes you have to work on the breath, sometimes you have to work on the mind. The breath is relatively easy, but it requires that you be really sensitive to a part of your awareness that you may have been cutting off. So try to be aware of where your spine is right now, where your hips are right now, your legs, your arms. Does the breath flow smoothly among those things? And then look at your mind. Is it wandering off to the past, the future? Is it wandering off to things it likes or doesn't like? Is this level of energy too high and frenetic, or is it too low and sleepy? What can you do to adjust? In this way, as you bring the body and the mind together, bring the breath and the mind together, you learn a lot about both. As the Buddha said, concentration, when it's based on virtue, gives rise to discernment. And the virtues that the Buddha was talking about have a lot to do with being truthful. In other words, really observing what you're doing, trying to do it, what you can as skillfully as you can. And then learning from that. That's where the insight comes. It doesn't arise miraculously out of a quiet mind. Suddenly, great insights suddenly appear. It's not always the case that you can say, I want a great insight, and an insight will come. But you learn about the workings of your mind as you try to get the mind to settle down. And that's the big issue in life, the workings of the mind. Because as it is, they're creating suffering where they don't have to. And you want to be sensitive to that. We tend to desensitize ourselves. And so now we're trying to turn around and resensitize ourselves to how the mind is creating unnecessary suffering. So look at the workings of the mind as you try to get it to settle down. Look at the workings of the breath as you try to get the mind to settle down. And you'll learn a lot about both.